Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jaime Piñero. Okay, this section of the orchard is called X Block. This is what I use for my research when I was a graduate student uh, 20 years ago. What you can see in um, here is one of the grafted trees. It has six different cultivars. So my first update is on apple maggot fly. We are monitoring in nine orchards in Massachusetts. And those orchards have trees that have been grafted with six cultivars each. Red Astra can, yellow transparent, etc. So what, what I'm reporting today is very low apple maggot fly captures everywhere, except this block. Historically, it has a high level of populations of plum curculio and apple maggot fly for research. But in any other orchard, captures have been zero, or maybe an average of 0.5 flies per um, sphere, on the sticky spheres for monitoring. And you know the threshold is an average of one or two apple maggot fly on average. So it's way below the threshold. You don't have to worry about apple maggot fly as of today. But it's a different story in this block. Well, the outlier, as you can see in the handout, there is 5A, apple maggot fly update. The chart that you see, is a comparison of apple maggot flies because you have the highest numbers in this block. I can tell you that on average, on baited spheres deployed in grafted trees are catching three to five times more apple maggot than trees that are not grafted. So for example, if I compare captures of apple maggot fly in the grafted tree versus this adjacent tree, the difference actually is three to five times more in the grafted tree. So I will go quick. The second uh, update is 5B, beneficial nematodes. I don't have anything to show you here, but in a different block, last week we uh, conducted an experiment. For the second year, we did an experiment comparing two different species of ento entomopathogenic nematodes, beneficial nematodes that you can apply to the soil, to kill clone curculio larvae. So the first study was in 2020, and we found that when you apply nematodes to the soil, and you apply the clone curculio larvae, and we control, we know how many we, we, we um, deploy, we're killing 83% of the larvae. So nematodes work at killing clone curculio larvae in the soil. The next research is to be able to see if we can kill apple maggot fly larvae and pupae in the soil, in the same area. So the second update is about beneficial nematodes. Those are microorganisms that live in the soil, and they are specialized in killing insects. They only feed on insects. Other nematodes uh, feed on plant roots, par uh, parasitic nematodes. Well, the chart that you can see in the handout, 5D, those are the results of the 2020 study. The only thing I want to highlight there is the control. When you place plum curculio larvae in the soil, and you apply water, what you see in the bar is an the emergence of plum curculio adults. That will be in the absence of, a, of any nematodes. That will be the normal emergence. But because you see all these very low bars, very low numbers, that, that is the activity of the nematodes. So the, the nematodes are killing most of the larvae in the soil. I will go now to the next uh, handout. The next update, the next page is on spotted wind drosophila. What I would like to, uh, to show you is in the chart, there has been an increase, a significant increase in activity. Um, that was two weeks ago. We are counting insects for this same uh, week, and the numbers are increasing to an average of five spotting with Rosophila per trap. And what you can see in the two charts and below, on the left, you can see the average number of apple and uh, spotted with Rosophila captured in traps which are baited with diluted grape juice. This grape juice has two uh, tables and uh, salt added. That is making the bait even more attractive. Salt? Salt, table salt. Uh, two percent, I can give you the numbers on how to make it. And on the left uh, side, you can see in purple, that will be the captures of uh, spotted wind drosophila in traps baited with uh, diluted grape juice and salt. The red bar is the sentry lure. It's a commercial lure. 
the cost, I have said that several times, that the cost of making one trap with juice is nine cents. The cost of buying commercial lures is about seven dollars. So it's very cheap and it's showing to be, just as before, effective or more effective. The Tresel lure, somehow, in this uh, experiment, is not catching anything. Well, it's catching other insects, but not spotting the sofila. But on the right side, the, the right end chart, you can see the opposite result for non-targets. What you can see is a very low number of non-target insects captured by the traps baited with dilute grape juice. My point is that it's more, it's more selective because you have the salt. I don't know what is happening with the salt, but it's helping to bring more spot with Drosophila and it's pushing away the non-targets. That's clear. What you can see in the sentry lure is a lot more non-targets than spotting with Drosophila. And with the juice, you can see the opposite result. You, the ratio is pretty much one to one. In grape juice, we have found, at least for last week, when you are counting flies, insects in traps or from traps, for every spot with Drosophila, you are getting one non-target. For the other lure, for every spot in Drosophila, you are getting six or ten non-targets. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's easier to count, it's easier to find the flies. Um, something else is that in, if you turn the page, now it's time for me to talk about color. Because all the experiments we have done in the last four years with Sporting with Drosophila, we have been using uh, clear traps, no color, because I really wanted to focus on the way the flies respond via smell. I didn't want to have the red color involved. But we know, we know that red is the best color for spotting with Drosophila. So last year, you can see that in the chart, in the um, back of that page. So I can see, you can see a picture, red trap, it's just like this, versus a white trap, that was the comparison. The two traps were, uh, the two trap types were baited with grape juice or water as a control. And you can see the results in the chart. When you have a trap painted red, you are catching four times more spotting with Drosophila than a white trap baited with the same look, with the same bait, which is the juice. When you have a red trap unbaited, it doesn't matter the color, you don't catch anything. So only because you are adding the color, now you're becoming even more effective at trapping, trapping spotting with Drosophila. So what I'm trying to say is that I think I'm pretty much done with research with spotting with Drosophila because it takes a lot of time and effort to do it, but I will continue monitoring in the next years in, in different places, but I will, I will start using only red traps. That's what I will do. You will see red traps in, the, in orchards because we already showed that um, the response is stronger when you have red traps, red traps, in particular, if you have the diluted grape juice with salt, that will make a very effective uh, trap for spotting with Drosophila. Let's see. Trap cropping and ghost trap. I will do it very quick now because in my presentation indoors, I will be talking about that. But we have 11 orchards in Massachusetts. I'm very happy about that. And those 11 orchards, they were willing to plant dwarf sunflower and buckwheat together. Those two plants are trap crops for a sting box. It's not new information, it has been reported before. The sting box have a preference for not only sunflower and buckwheat, they also uh, really like uh, millet. They also like sorghum, soybean, for example. Those are important pests in the South. Uh, Leaf-footed box are very important in the South, in Florida, for example, Georgia. So all that information uh, shows that sting box in general, they are highly attracted to sunflower, buckwheat, millet, and um, sorghum. So I selected some sunflower and buckwheat for, for some, re some research in Massachusetts. So we are attracting these insects to the trap crop area. And then we have the ghost trap. I will show you pictures, I will talk about that in indoors. Basically, we are able to kill the Brahma Moretan skin bug, the invasive insect, in the trap crop plant with no insecticides because we have the ghost trap. The ghost trap has the pheromone and it has also some fabric, some netting, which is treated with insecticide. It's a parietroid. So we have found um, so far in 10 orchards in Massachusetts, 15 Brahma Moretan skin bugs. So they're active, but the season is just beginning. 
to higher, higher populations are expected in August, for example, September. But that is the goal of the project, to be able to push, um, to pull the insects away from the crop. And this may work in vegetables and may work in apple or peach. You're, you're saying this as a control option. As a way to help, but you still not have to monitor the, block, the, the trees. And, but I'm, I will continue with this work for two or three more years. But the idea will be that, because when you are getting close to harvest, what are you going to spray to apples or to other fruits um, against brown marmorated? Because they're very difficult to kill with insecticides. Uh, my name is Jose, and I'm a graduate student uh, working with Dr. Pinero. So, uh, if you uh, if you turn to page uh, 5e, you will see my experiment. Uh, so my experiment is about evaluating the performance of plant volatile-based lures, which is a mega lure from Tresse, either alone, uh, either alone or in combination with uh, aromatic compound, which is benzaldehyde. So benzaldehyde has been previously used to lure the plum curculio. So in our previous experiment, we found that uh, benzaldehyde has some effect on the moth as well. So in this uh, study, we are uh, testing seven olfactory treatments, which are uh, megalure alone, uh, benzaldehyde low dose, benzaldehyde medium dose, benzaldehyde high dose, and megalure plus benzaldehyde low dose, high dose, and medium, uh, medium dose. And there is one control trap. So if you look at the result, uh, we are finding that if you add benzaldehyde to this uh, plant volatile-based lure, which is megalure, there is an increased capture of oriental fruit moth. But if you increase the dose of benzaldehyde, it has negative effect on the uh, oriental fruit moth capture. And uh, we also found that uh, benzaldehyde um, has a similar capture as compared to megalure. And we are also trapping uh, curling moth with this megalure. But uh, since we are testing only in this orchard, and this orchard has a very low pest population of curling moth, so it is very hard to uh, evaluate the performance of uh, curling moth. And this year, we are also testing um, the same experiment with same lures, but we excluded the benzaldehyde high dose because it has negative effect on the captures. So this year, we are testing uh, benzaldehyde medium dose, low dose, and very low dose. So you might be asking why this plant volatile based lures to trap this curling moth or the oriental food moth, since we already had this pheromone lures. So there are two important reasons. So one, if you are doing a mating disruption, so you are using a, a sex pheromone to attract this moth, and, you, and only the male moths. So on, at the same time, you are also placing this monitoring trap, which are baited with uh, sex pheromone, to monitor the pest population in this mating disruption orchard. So what happens is that you end up with uh, very low moth captures because you are using the same component as the mating disruption uh, component. So in this monitoring trap, you will have a very low moth captures. So instead of uh, sex pheromone, you can use this plant volatile based lures, which is very different from this uh, mating disruption dispenser. And you will have the good number of moth captures. And the second important reason is that uh, this plant volatile lure can also capture uh, the females. So whenever you are doing a mating disruption, there is a likely chance that the mated female can enter the orchard and lay the eggs, and you will have this fruit damage. But if you use this plant volatile waste lures to monitor the uh, moth population, and if you can dissect the moth, like male and female, then you can also know either it's, it is mated or not. So it has two different uh, and important uses. And you can use this kind of uh, trap uh, to monitor these uh, uh, oriental fruit moth and curling moth. So this mega lure has uh, four different chiromons loaded in one. And here are this uh, sample. You can take a few of them uh, in your orchard uh, just to see how many moth you can capture. And maybe you can also dissect the moth to know male and female. Yeah, and I have a couple of more ca uh, more traps if you want to take them to your orchard. Thank you. Uh, every now and then, you you get a, a real wacko experiment. And uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Dwayne said that he wanted to do a scab experiment, and uh, I think he may have done that because I had started to work on thinning, and so he was going to get even and do a scab experiment. Anyway, um, that. 
a landscape company with a new chemical showed up and said that by injecting this chemical and using into the soil and using it very few times, they felt that they might be able to control scab. They'd had some uh, luck on other shade tree diseases, uh, but they wanted to test it against apple scab. And so we sort of shrugged and said, sure, let's do it. And uh, so the treatments are in here. We compared their various timings and rates of their chemical with a standard uh, fungicide treatment and an untreated control. Last year, in a nutshell, uh, the only treatment that really worked was the standard fungicide treatment. Everything else was the same as the control. But there was a lot of leafhopper damage in here, and so it was difficult to sort the leafhopper from the scab damage, and so we said, oh, let's, we'll do it again. So it's here. Uh, this year, there is a little bit of separation. It looks like maybe one of the injection treatments are maybe working. Uh, but only working uh, moderately well, not as well as the standard fungicide treatment. It would be great if we could get away from spraying and inject a treatment once or twice into the soil, uh, a little more labor intensive but uh, in, in the short run, but <laughs> you'd, you'd be out of the sprayer business a little bit. But I, I kind of don't think so. So um, anyway. It was kind of a negative experiment. We've, we've had fun with it, but uh, we'll see. Maybe at the end of the year we'll have better, different results. Yeah, Andrew.